Hey guys, Jax here, Free Auto Mechanic. I'm here today with a 2013 Ford Edge. Uh, what's going on with it is the brake pedal just wants to ease down to the floor when you put your foot on it. And that's a classic indication of a bad master cylinder. So we're going ahead and take care of that today. All right, so your master cylinder is hidden way back in here up against the firewall. First thing you got to do is disconnect the battery and then take the battery tray out. Then we're going to take the air filter box and the air cleaner lines completely out of the way to give us enough room to access the, the two lines on the side of the master cylinder and the two bolts that bolt it to the wall. Hopefully this will work somehow. Now that's supposed to give us enough room to get back in there. We take those two lines off down here and the two bolts way in the back. But I don't know that I'm going to be able to show you that, but there's two bolts that go in the back of it. There's an electrical connector that's for your brake fluid level light. You want to pinch the bottom of it and then it'll pull loose. You see when you push in on this bottom part of the tab and then it'll come loose for you. It gives you a little better access to get to the bolt. The two nuts are one's on this side and one's on the opposite side. You're going to use a 15 millimeter to take these lines loose.
And if they won't come loose easily, then make sure you get a set of line wrenches. Fortunately for us, those come loose pretty easy. Just take them both loose and they'll pull right off out of there. I'm using a 13 millimeter deep well and a pretty good size extension to get to this first side. That'll get this side of it. Once you get the two bolts out of it, you can remove it. And then we'll have to remove the reservoir and swap it to the, the new master cylinder. Give you an idea of what it looks like down inside there. That's what you're taking it off of. The man said, hope it's the right one. It's a little easier to lay them next to each other when you've got it apart than it is trying to compare them when it's still attached to the vehicle. But taking a close look, they look almost identical. So that's a good thing. Now we just got to swap this tank over to the new one and bench bleed it. Now to be able to remove the reservoir, if you take a look, it's what's called a reverse star or reverse security. And so that's what you're going to have to have. All I'm doing is putting a screwdriver underneath there and prying it up. And since this one's full, you want to take precautions that you're about to make a mess. Now you pop it off and then we'll put the other one on there. I'm gonna take, put a little bit of brake fluid on the rubber seal so they slide in a little easier. And just put it on the same way we took it off. That's the idea. Once you get your reservoir put back on, you want to chalk it up in a vise, and then you want to get your bleeder kit out, which is what I got here. And we're going to put two of the fittings and a couple of hoses into the side, and then we're going to run them back up into the reservoir. Essentially, that's what your outfit's going to look like. You got it hooked on there, and then we're going to push the plunger in a few times and it's going to suck the brake fluid through and the air bubbles out and then we should be good to go. Once you get your lines and everything connected you want to make sure that your hoses that are inside there have fluid touching the bottom of them. And then you're just going to keep pressing the, the plunger in. And what you're looking for is these air bubbles right here. You want to work those out of it. Just keep doing it till they're gone. Once you get the master cylinder bench bled, then we'll just go and bolt it back on in reverse order. So now that you've got it back together, 
you need to bleed the brakes and on this particular vehicle uh, it has a unique uh, feature to it that uh, isn't typical of all the vehicles that you've probably worked on before uh, I think it's true from the 2007 to 2017 uh, they do recommend that you pressure bleed uh, I don't have a pressure bleeder so I use the manual bleed process which is same as it's been for decades you have an assistant pump up the brake pedal you crack open the, the uh, bleeder valve on the calipers tighten it back up let off the brake pedal it should be good well I went ahead and tried that and couldn't get all the air out of it so I did a little research into it and it turns out that there's an extra step to bleeding the brake system on this vehicle it's equipped with a, a park brake pedal that you press in and then press again and it releases. It's cable driven and it runs straight to the brake caliper itself. And what you have to do during the procedure, and it is in some of the manuals, not all of them, but in the higher end manuals, it, it discusses this. That's where I found out about it. Uh, you pump up the brake pedal. You have your assistant hold it in place, crack your bleeder valve, tighten the bleeder valve, and then while still holding pressure on that brake pedal, you press and release the park brake lever or foot lever, however you want to call it. You got to do that five times. Then you let off the brake pedal. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but I guess because the cable actuates the piston as well, it moves it that extra little bit. To get that tiny little bit of air that's still in the system out but uh, I did that two times on each caliper and they're only in the back so you just have to do it to the rear and after doing that I was able to get all of the air out of the system so hopefully if you've been having issues or troubles that extra little tip there save you some time and headache now there is one other thing that I found that I came across doing research on this vehicle. Uh, those of you that have been having excessive trouble with, uh, for no reason, just overnight or after you're driving on some icy roads or something, your brake pedal is low to the floor. Uh, nothing actually caused this reaction or you're oblivious to what happened you let somebody borrow the car you got back in it now the brake pedals real low to the floor or it seems a little soft well this particular model has been having issues with the HCU or the hydraulic control unit and that's what uh, your ABS system works off of and what's been happening is one of the valves that was actuated is sticking open or hanging open and that just allows that brake fluid to bypass it uh, similar to a, uh, a master cylinder failure found where this has been happening quite often I guess and one of the workarounds you know of course you can replace the hydraulic control unit and it's going to cost you $550 to $1000 don't know that we want to spend that money or some people have been successful and when I say some people I'm saying over 1500 people that I read the comments about that responded to this information you know, take the vehicle out to a uh, some say you need uh, to do it on gravel some say they just did it on regular street but you drive it about 15 to 20 miles an hour and slam on the brake and what that does is it actuates the ABS con or the hydraulic control unit causes those valves to move again and once return to where their normal position is and it brings that pedal height back up so uh, if that's the case for you uh, I hope that extra information helps and goes a long way for you I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos and if you haven't already please subscribe thanks for watching